uh, Nathaniel here. I hope you guys are super excited. We're going to be going into Python's premier deep learning library that's not TensorFlow. Uh, this is called Keras. Today we're going to be going over an introduction to Keras. Why should you care about it? A little bit on why you should care about deep learning. We're going to be showing how you install it. And we're finally going to be showing you uh, just some of the cool features. Uh, so let's get started. Um, Installation is super easy. Uh, the, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to activate my virtual environment. Uh, if you guys don't know about virtual environments, then you should just head over to uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to Python. It's, it's really good. Um, and it's just pip install. Pip install, uh, and we can do dash upgrade, uh, Keras. I'll go ahead and install everything that you need, except for TensorFlow. Uh, to install TensorFlow, it's again incredibly easy pip install, uh, and again we can do the dash u, uh, tensor uh, flow. Do, 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 do. And so this will install all of TensorFlow that you need. Uh, so in this case, it's just updating. Um, if you want to use uh, Theano, which I don't recommend, uh, you, you can go ahead and do that. You'll need to install it separately. Uh, in fact, Keras has already uh, started up using TensorFlow. So that means when you start up Keras, it's going to automatically default to using TensorFlow. That being said, um, uh, I will show you in a later video on how you can switch all of that. Um, this looks like I'm just uh, updating to TensorFlow 1.1, I believe. Yeah, TensorFlow 1.1, which is really cool. Um, in TensorFlow 1.2, Keras is actually going to be part uh, of uh, the TensorFlow library. And in fact, uh, this, this, this is just going to be a super secret thing here. Uh, I believe import uh, TensorFlow as tf. Say a little bit tf. Uh, oh, let's let's quit out of here. So you never want to use Python. You always want to use IPython. This this is the important command. Uh, so import uh, TensorFlow as tf. Takes a little bit tf. Contrib. Uh, yeah, dot Keras. No. Yeah, it is. Um, so, so this is, this is kind of new, um, and, and you guys should know about this. But um, let's let's talk about what Keras is first. Uh, so this is a cool discovery. I didn't know TensorFlow one point one was already released. Um, so Keras is a high level wrapper, an, an API in order to do deep learning. Um, if you guys don't know what deep learning is, uh, you should definitely check out my deep learning history. The link should be somewhere. Um, uh, and, and that should give you a good intuition as to what it is and why it's important. Um, literally, all of the important translation applications, all of the important vision applications, a ton of the important uh, video and audio processing applications, they all use deep learning these days. Uh, deep learning is the new uh, internet in, in a way. It's, it's incredibly important. Uh, so if you don't know a ton about that, you should definitely learn. And if you know some about it and you want to get started, uh, Keras is the way to do that. Uh, you can start with TensorFlow. So Keras is built on top of TensorFlow. TensorFlow is like the, the like C of, of deep learning. It's it's uh, incredibly verbose. There's a lot of extra stuff that you need to do. We're not going to be getting into that. Instead, we're going to be using Keras, which is a high-level wrapper, an API on top. In fact, it became so popular, uh, Google decided to uh, take it and, and you know quote unquote acquire it add it into TensorFlow itself. Uh, TensorFlow is owned by Google. So this is why we see this in TensorFlow itself, to, so tf.contrib.keras. Um, so in the future, uh, it's going to be tf.keras, um, but that's going to be in 1.2. OK. Um, uh, ooh, quit. Leave. Leave. Leave us. OK. So uh, let, let's get started then. So we've. We've discussed a little bit about what uh, Keras is, uh, why it's important in the realm of deep learning. It's, it's the premier high-level API in Python for deep learning. If you want to do deep learning uh, in Python, use Keras. Um, and we talked a little bit about how to install it and what, what future plans are it. Um, so let's let's just give it a go. Um, so Keras has some you know, guiding principles. User friendliness, it's super user friendly. If you've used TensorFlow before, it's a beast. Uh, like you gotta, gotta whip it into shape, you know, gotta go call of the wild on it. Um, it's modular, is Keras. Uh, modular is pretty good. Uh, I will show you this, especially in the, um, uh, the functional API. You can really 
plug and play, mix and match different pieces to make really expressive uh, pieces of code that are very small. Um, super easily extensible, and I will show you this in uh, later on when we're uh, plugging it into Scikit-Learn. And if you haven't heard of Scikit-Learn, uh, again, there should be a, a link somewhere. Uh, click it. it uh, I've done a huge uh, tutorial series on it. It's amazing and exciting and woohoo. Um, and then finally, it works with Python. You know, it only works with Python. Um, so Keras is great. Uh, you can do your research. There's a ton of other libraries. It's like tflearn, um, lasagna used to be part of it, pylearn, ton, tons of stuff. Keras is the one you want to use. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll do some machine learning. Uh, so how is machine learning done? So in Keras, you need to make a model. Um, for any machine learning, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on, I'll do a, do a basic class in data science and machine learning. You need data, so we get some data. Our data is of shape 404, 404 examples, and 13-dimensional data. You can use any dimension you want in Keras. You construct your model, so we, we give it a couple of layers. I'll talk about this a little bit later on. You compile your model. Um, this is somewhat more important in, in Theano, but you always have to compile your model in, in Keras. And then you fit your model, and as, as you can see, I've already fit it once here just to make sure that this was going to go well. Um, and you'll see as you fit your model, the loss goes down. Uh, so that means you're better able to predict what's, what's going to be able to happen. Um, you can super easily check this. We can go ahead and evaluate on the test um, and print out the loss in the metrics. So pretty good, pretty good. Uh, in addition to this, you can always go ahead and use your model to make predictions in the future. This is just kind of like the, the full deal. You have some training data, you make a model, you f uh, train your model, you fit your model, uh, you see if your model works, and then finally, if it works well, you, you push it in production, um, and you can use model.predict in order to do this. There's so much stuff in Keras. We're, we're going to be getting to a lot. There's going to be uh, different types of models that we can build that have different types of specs and functionality. Uh, the model is composed of layers, and there are so many layers that you need to know. And in addition, this compilation, the fitting, the blah, 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 it's all got a lot of, a lot of zest, a lot of juice in there that we're going we're gonna to wring out. Um, so I hope you guys are excited. Uh, and tune in for the next episode as we're going to be talking about data sets uh, that we're going to be using a little bit, if not extensively, with Keras. Okay, thanks, and I'll see you next time.